Hi, everyone. It's Bert from Season Gaming, and thanks for joining us for episode 24 of our bi-weekly bidcast. I'm joined as usual with Ains, and we have a special guest with us today, Dan Rodriguez from Digital Hoarders. We're going to be going through our typical format as we usually do as with news, and our main topic today is going to be talking about third-person single-player experiences that Sony has been pushing out from a first party third party, and also exclusives that are kind of coming from cross-platform games as well. So let's go ahead and kick it off with the biggest game probably of the year, game of the year contender right off the bat, God of War. So I have started the game already. I'm probably about 12 hours in, and I love everything I'm seeing so far. Um, I know I move a lot quicker than you guys, but Ains, where are you at in the game? What do you like and what are you hating? <laughs> I made it to the Blue Dwarf, so we're going to start there. Um, no, I'm loving it so far. I know we'll talk about this a little more um, once we get to the Sony uh, main topic. But yeah, no, I, I'm really impressed by it. It's gorgeous. We're playing on the PS4 Pro and on an OLED screen, and it, it just pops. Uh, really, really incredible. Probably one of the best-looking games I've seen. The voice acting, the cinematics, um, the fact that it's filmed in a single cut is uh, all of it is impressive. And I think everyone basically across the industry is saying the same thing right now. So I'm still early in the game. I just got to the point where it starts to open up a little bit in the map. Um, so we won't be talking about any spoilers or any story elements today. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm enjoying the hell out of it. Yeah, I'm loving it too, guys. I mean, it is just graphically, it looks amazing. I mean, it's, you know, people, I think, get kind of, a, kind of a misrepresentation of, you know, resolutions or graphics. I think this game would look awesome, like on like a CRT television. <laughs> I mean, it's that good. I mean, it looks so good. And um, I'm loving it. I mean, just it's, it's, it's one of those games that is, you know, right in my wheelhouse. It's, you know, a fun third person you get to smash the crap out of people. I mean, it's it's all those good things, you know, kind of bundled into one. Is it game of the year? I don't know. Maybe. It's awesome. <laughs> so um, it, it's going to have, you know, it sets the bar on several different levels for me anyway. So I'm really loving it. Yeah, one of the funny things I've seen on social media is uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 better be good. Because <laughs> if it's yeah. not, this is almost a lock uh, for, I mean, I, I really have no idea what else is going to touch it aside from maybe Spider-Man. But even that, I think it's going to be hard to kind of uh, compete. But I think the biggest thing that's going to come up is going to be Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, I don't know if Beyond is going to be, or Beyond, uh, Detroit uh, Become Human is going to be anywhere near as good. But a lot of people don't really pick up that type of game to begin with outside of the big fans. But, man, it's it's mind-blowing. Um, as Ain said, we're going to touch more on this on our season gaming conversations that we're going to actually shoot later this week with Dan. Again, he's going to join us. And we're going to go into full detail about it. We're going to talk a little bit of spoilers if, if you tune in. It'll only be 30 minutes long, and we'll talk in full detail where we're at, what we like about it, what we hate about it. Um, so, yeah, but one, one other thing I want to touch on that was funny is um, – there's ever been a system seller. Uh, when I went to go pick up my game um, or game and console at Best Buy, I've never seen so many uh, in the back that had been, you know, for pickup or on reservation. So if this game is not selling PS4 Pros, um, it is selling consoles like crazy, I think. And maybe people were waiting for this to get the Pro, but their sales numbers are going to be insane. I have a feeling. Yeah, I think um, there's a famous analyst, not Pachter, who we often poke fun at, but another analyst that said that this is on track to be the best-selling Sony first-party IP in years um, out of the gate. Based on just pre-order figures and everything else, you know, the data they look at. But I think uh, I saw the same thing. You know, I went yesterday morning. I picked up way too much God of War merchandise. Um, but there was already people walking. I got there at 10.03. They open at 10, and there was already people walking out with uh, PS4 uh, God of War Pros uh, special bundles. So uh, I'm in the same thing. I, I see other friends and people I talk to on social media saying the same thing. So, yeah, it's going to be a huge, huge hit. It's all the rage right now, pun intended. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's, wow. uh, <laughs> I slipped that one in there pretty yeah. quick. You got it. See you guys. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> and we've lost Dan. Dan, Dan we're done, done, too. We're done with our podcast this week. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I, th I think uh, all the superlatives have been said, right? I don't know what else there is to say. I'm just looking for, I just wish I had more time. <laughs> I need more time to sit down and just play it. Yeah, I, I, I'm the same way. I, I digitally got it. I, um, most of my library is digitally now anyway, so, um, <clears throat> or digital, actually. But um, <laughs> so it was ready to go for me uh, Friday morning. 
I just booted it up. But a lot of my friends on Twitter, you know, and other social media sites, they, you know, they were kind of waiting. Oh, I'm going to Best Buy. I'm going to get this. And that special edition was outstanding looking, I thought. I mean, for, for a Sony uh, console, you know, it, it looked amazing for, you know, because I've seen like their their Monster Hunter World, which actually I like that one. Their Star Wars, their a couple other ones. I was going to, I thought about getting it, but I'm really, really hoping they have a Spider-Man special edition. <laughs> I, know, I know other because people. Because if they do, that that's, 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 that's happening for sure. <laughs> if that's happens. I'm a huge Spider-Man guy. But yeah, I mean, everybody is talking about this game. You know, everybody. I mean, they did a, a amazing job up to this point. So yeah, yeah. yeah l- last thing I'll touch on that is as you guys progress throughout the game, the the Stone Mason edition, the Collector's edition, I guess you could call it as well, makes even more sense. So if you play through it and you end up loving it, you might actually go back and buy the Stone Mason edition <laughs> because the the stuff it's in it's so good. So, um, but we'll talk about that. I think um, Ains did his unboxing of it, so you can see all the pieces that come along with it and you can kind of see as you're playing if you want to pick that up um i think they're still available at stores they were initially sold out and all of a sudden everybody had stock like i've been joking about lately i think it's to hype stuff up but that's just a a bird conspiracy theory thing so ignore but uh let's let's talk about some other stuff that happened in the news this week with um another exclusive but for microsoft so forza horizon 4 has been confirmed for sure at for e3 uh, we don't have exactly a release date or anything along those lines. Um, Ains and I are big car guys, as we were kind of joking about um, off camera before this. And so we're pretty excited about it. We haven't seen any footage yet, but it's kind of nice to see that it has been confirmed for E3. Uh, we'll be there, so maybe we can get our hands on it. And uh, I personally love the Horizon. If you're not into the simulator type racing that um, Forza Motorsport offers, if you like more of the arcadey racing, Horizon is where it's at. So I think we mentioned Tokyo was kind of one of the teasers or maybe Japan uh, was a teaser. So I think that's kind of cool that we got some confirmation finally. Yeah, no surprise that this is going to be at E3. Um, it's the highest rated racing game out there. Um, it's it's definitely one of my favorites in Forza Horizon 3 I'm referring to. It's absolutely gorgeous, especially on the One X. And uh, it has just a plethora of cars, things to do, tons of social features and online. I mean, it, it really is the best open world racer on the market and maybe probably ever. Um, so if Forza Horizon 4 kind of mixes it up a little bit, adds some new features, especially if it goes to Japan, you know, um, <clears throat> they haven't confirmed the Japan setting, but the fact that we haven't heard any rumors about any other setting over the past year, um, you know, if you remember Forza Horizon 3, we started hearing Australia well ahead of time as well, and that turned out to be the fact. So I don't see really where else it could be that, you know, people wouldn't be aware of them filming and, and doing things for if it wasn't Japan at this point. So really excited for it. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. I mean, that's 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 the thing about Forza Horizon. You know, even if you're not like a car guy, you know, it's still a fun arcade game to play. You know, and that's, you know, as opposed to the simulation stuff of like GT Sport and uh, Forza 7, um, I've heard little bits and pieces mostly about you know tokyo but i've also heard maybe la but everything that i've seen or the most of it most of what i've seen has been something to do with tokyo or japan or something like that and i'm gonna buy it and i'm gonna play it for probably 20 hours put it down play something else and come back to it (laughs) because that's what i always do but I've loved every one of them so far. They've been really, really good. Um, and they're just like, I, I, I'm trying to figure out how they're going to, you know, make it look better than three because three looked amazing. Then it got the enhancement and now, you know, they're coming out with the four. I mean, it, it's, it's the way that they're doing these things. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. So. Yeah, there's there's really nothing else like it. I mean, if you think about the open world kind of arcadey racer where, I mean, you could kind of race on the street, but you can still race in the countryside. Um, and something that had me thinking when the Jap- Japan was kind of teased or talked about or even rumored was I wonder if this will kind of pull in some uh, Japanese gamers. I mean, as we know, the the Japanese market for the Xbox in general is not very strong. If anything, it's almost dead. I think Microsoft has even mentioned they don't waste that much time 
uh, doing any advertising or anything in Japan because they're so loyal to Nintendo and Sony. Um, but even Sony is kind of nothing compared to Nintendo over there, which is nuts. But um, I don't know. I think if there is Tokyo and um, some of the uh, some of the places that are in, in in Japan that are known to have some some racing culture, this could be kind of fun for them. I know the Australians loved it when Forza Horizon went there. There were some cars that were exclusive to Australia that you could only get there and built there, and people talk about it and rave about it all the time. Yeah, I mean, it would be certainly interesting to see. As you said, the market for the Xbox is pretty much dead in Japan, but um, I think if uh, even the Japanese, if they give this a chance, uh, you know, because I, I know there's a lot of people out there, we've talked about this before, that really just focus on Gran Turismo, which is a shame, um, because really Gran Turismo is not the franchise it used to be, and, um, you know, the Horizon and Motorsport series are excellent. So if you're a car guy, um, you should be checking those out if you haven't already, that's for sure. Yeah, so sticking on the <laughs> Xbox uh, conversation, um, some big news happened in the last couple of weeks. We've got some more backwards compatibility on the way with some new titles, not only from last gen, but the gen before that. So as is called in the industry, the OG Xbox or the original Xbox, depending on how you, you pronounce it. We've got a lot of new titles coming. I think there was 19 total. Um, in those 19 total games, some have been enhanced. So we kind of love this news as being big Xbox gamers here. Some of the classics are there. Some of the classics we still want are missing, but hopefully there's more coming. But I think by the time you're listening to this podcast, um, all of them have gone live, if not a few that are still remaining. So what are you playing, Ains, that is backwards compatible um, today? I know, I know one that you... Uh, have played and installed right away, but what else? Yeah, so this was big. Uh, 19 original Xbox titles, like you said, another six Xbox 360 titles. The 360 ones um, were big titles too. So Red Dead Redemption was the biggest. I installed that right away. Um, there's also Sonic Generations, Portal 2, Gears of War 2, uh, and a couple others I'm forgetting off the top of my head. But then uh, in the 19 original Xbox games, uh, they had Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind, which is uh, really the only way you're going to play that game on console. Um, along with, you know, some other classics too, Jade Empire, the Bioware classic, uh, Conquer Live and Reloaded, um, things like that, that just look, uh, astounding really, because, uh, the improvements to those, um, are really, really impressive. In fact, I think Digital Foundry did their Morrowind, um, kind of analysis either yesterday or the day before, and they're, you know, they're just kind of blown away about how well the games are running, you know, almost 60 frames, no dropped frames, Resolutions real really scaled up, um, so yeah. I mean, I have Morrowind. Uh, I'm going to talk more about it a little later. And Red Dead Redemption installed. Red Dead Redemption looks absolutely stunning. And if you remember, Red Dead Redemption did not come out on PC ever. Rockstar never made a PC version. So what that means is, you know, this is now by far the definitive way to play Red Dead Redemption, which is perfect timing, as we said. Red Dead Redemption two coming later this year. So um, I, I just love this. Uh, I know there's been some ridiculous talk of why is Microsoft focusing so much on old games? Um, which really makes no sense. You know, this is an added feature to the console and the fact that you can play three generations of games and higher fidelity now is, is excellent. And I think everyone should be applauding that. Oh, absolutely. I think that, I mean, it's just more games from your, you know, digital library that are now available to play whenever you want. I mean, this, it, it's, it's a win-win for everybody. Um, you know, I've got, all the Star Wars games coming out for it, I'm probably going to, if I don't have them, which I probably don't, is, I'm going to pick them all up. Jedi <laughs> Academy, I think. Um, uh, what was the other one? The Republic Commando uh, Battlefront. Two. Yeah, both Battlefronts 1 and 2. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. I mean, that's that's <laughs> those were my games back in the day, so I really love playing all those. I'm going to absolutely put them back on. Uh, the Enhanced Ones... Star Wars, the which one was that? The oh, I can't remember. It's killing me. But anyway, Knights <laughs> of the Old Republic. Are you talking about? No, the the one that came for uh, the one that's on the 360. The it's not for with, no Star uh, Killer for, Force Unleashed. Yeah, the Force Unleashed. Uh, that Force one just Unleashed. got yeah, that one just got an enhancement. Portal Two, awesome game. I haven't gone back and actually looked at any of these yet, but I'm going to as soon as. I get through <laughs> my main game right now, <laughs> so um, it's just there's just so many, man. There's just so many, and it's it it it's not a bad thing. I mean, I don't know why anybody would be upset with you know having access to more games. Doesn't make much sense, but nah, it's it's what it is. 
Yeah, I think it's the console wars um, kind of taking over, and I've, I always kind of joke with a lot of them. And sometimes, you know, when you have to answer someone that's trying to call you out, it's funny because a lot of the games that have sold on the PlayStation Four that are remasters, um, you had to pay for them. You need to buy them all over again. A couple examples would be Last of Us or uh, the Uncharted One through Three uh, collection. Um, if you simply would have been backwards compatible and then enhanced them, you could have had it for free. Um, it was kind of funny because I think it was Darksiders that recently had an enhancement for it as well. There's actually a Darksiders remaster that I actually picked up, and I didn't know that this whole backwards compatibility was going to happen. And the enhancement for the backwards compatibility patch um, for the original game actually looks better than the remaster. Uh, so that's kind of crazy it, to me um, because it's, like I said, I bought it. Um, and at the same time, it's free. There's no cost to it at all if you have the software ready. So you just throw it in your Xbox. It literally loads a digital file. Um, and then you get the enhancement in there and it shows up in your enhanced title. So it's really cool. I hope they continue to do it and continue to add titles for OG Xbox. I think when we saw more of them coming, as we said, 19, um, there's already have other things that I really want to play. Project Gotham Racing 2. Uh, we joke about Ames. Uh, Kung Fu Chaos would be awesome to see kind of enhanced. Yep. I mean, there's there's a lot of just classics that we want to see um, come, and that and that they're, they're still playable today. They're not you know so old and outdated that you can't play them anymore. Yeah, it's you know just to take us to this next uh, thing we were going to talk about too. To your point about paying for remasters or just paying for re-releases is uh, Shenmue One and Two are now coming right to Xbox One, PlayStation Four, and PC, and that's another perfect example where. Sega is going to charge twenty nine ninety nine, and they're not even remaking or remastering these games. It's just basically porting them because the original Shenmue was on Dreamcast, and Shenmue Two was an Xbox. Going back to original Xbox exclusive, so um, really they're just taking these to another platform and saying, you know, if you want to play them, they're thirty dollars. And those are those are pretty dated games, especially from a mechanic standpoint. Yeah, I've never played either one of them, which you know. <laughs> Sorry, uh, but um, no, I don't. Is, I don't know if you want to go back and play them after modern. Yeah. Man, they're, right. they're very I know, dated. I know Shenmue two or three is coming out eventually, or is that is that that one out yet? No, no, it's, it, it's no, coming, it, but it's it, been on just a nutty development cycle. Um, right. Sony initially was uh, going to kind of flagship it, and then all of a sudden it became a Kickstarter. Um, and as we saw the trailer that, gosh, when was that Ains? Was that last E3? The no, that was, that was two years ago. And, and the funny thing, yeah. even since then, they had it on Sony stage, right? With Yu Suzuki. Yeah. Um, since then, they've changed again. So now Sony's not even going to publish the title. Deep Silver is. Um, so the rumor now is we don't even know if this is going to be a Sony uh, or PS4 exclusive anymore. Because if it's a third-party publisher and a third-party studio, why would it be exclusive? So. Yeah. If anything, it might be a timed exclusive, um, kind of like a lot of the games that are kind of <clears throat> being timed to the console um, and then coming out later. But yeah, to your point, Dan, if you hadn't played it, um, I think today, in today's age, you need to have a lot of patience for Shinmu 1 at least. Um, some of the quick time events that happen in there and even some of the dialogue is, is going to be brutal for you. But um, it might be worth a try just to see what all the fuss is about, but I don't know if you'd make it all the way through. Right. It seems like a lot of people have been talking about it when it it was announced a lot of people uh seem to be super excited and that's great i mean that but that's what you want to see yeah you know to your point of paying extra you know thirty dollars that's not great <laughs> but you know it it is what it is you know it, it, and, and nostalgia is a hell of a drug man i mean that's yeah. <laughs> and, and, and then xbox you know and microsoft they know that you know and, and to a smaller extent you know playstation you know so Am I going to buy them? Probably. Are they going? Am I going to play them? Probably not for another <laughs> six months. This is my life: is <laughs> basically buying games that I never play, and it'll, you know, is what it is. But Bert, I, I'll Bert. have them there, you know, just in case I do want to try them out. Yeah, Bert and I frequently talk about the same thing. We own so many games that are just still in the plastic. Either yep. you know, it was felt like one you needed to pick up, or you need to play, or you got a good deal on, and it's just time. It's always time. So uh, moving on to the remasters uh, conversation. So Dark Souls, if you are a Nintendo Switch owner um, and you have been waiting for that uh, Dark Souls remaster, once again, it's not a remake, it's a remaster. Um, you are going to be kind of sad at the moment because it has been delayed. So um, it's not a massive delay. I think it's only a couple weeks. But for me, the worst news of this news was the Amiibo is also delayed. Because of this. <laughs> so um, 
it's kind of sad. Uh, <laughs> what did we do? And it's the second we heard, we ran to, to order it online to make sure we could get it. And it sold out super quick. So, Dan, yeah. I don't know if you're waiting for an Amiibo, if you even care about Amiibos. But uh, this was the fastest selling Amiibo I've seen ever. No. Thankfully, now it's two against one. We can stop talking about Amiibos. <laughs> <laughs> I have it in my hand. Actually, this um, is going to be the first Amiibo I've ever bought. Uh, but I don't know why I'm buying it. It's just another one of those things because I'm not buying Dark Souls for the Switch. Uh, I'd much rather play it on the uh, the enhanced uh, 4K 60 on the X. So that's how I'm picking it up. But this, you know, it's cool that Dark Souls is coming to the Switch. We talked about that. Um, it's still coming in summer. It's, it, it's not even coming out till May, what, 25th or something for Xbox and PS4. So if it's still coming out in the summer for the Switch, the delay is not even that bad, really. So no big deal, really. No, I think, you know, for... I'll probably go with the same route. I'll probably buy it for the X. Um, I've played it. I suck at it. <laughs> if I had it on my Switch, I would probably throw it. So it's yep. probably safer for me to, you know, I've got several controllers. I can go through that. I can't really <laughs> throw my Switch and then just go buy a new one like it's nothing. <laughs> but, you know, all those all those Dark Souls games, you know, that um, are out. I mean, they're, I think they're ridiculously hard. Do I like trying? Yeah, I like trying them. I try to play them. I've got all three of them. It's, you know, I've played all three of them at some point. And I <laughs> doesn't matter. I still, <laughs> I still keep playing them. I still keep buying them. Like, oh, it's, you know, Bloodborne. Oh, that's free. I guess like that, that'll be fine. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. I play it for like 20 minutes. I literally, in Bloodborne, I can't even get past the first area. And Dark Souls, <laughs> when I played that for the first time, I got to the camp right after the tutorial Apparently, I pissed off the ghost that was sitting there, and he kept killing me over and over and over again until I said, what am I doing? I've got other games I can play. This is ridiculous. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I kind of stopped on that one. But I came back to three a little bit, got to the first boss. Same thing happened. I don't know what's happening. I need to go back and just play them because they seem like really good games. They seem like such good games, and they look great. You know, so... That's my. It's one of my long-term goals. Sounds like you and Bert have a, a lot in common on this front. <laughs> they're they're great games if you like breaking shit and you know, um, yes. like taking out that stress in your life. But uh, yeah, funny news to come on that in the near future. So you'll be hearing more about Dark Souls. <laughs> but uh, to your point, I wonder if Nintendo is aware that people are going to be breaking their switches just from like you know, <laughs> grabbing like, the switch and like turning it either way to out of anger or right. just a. The, the, the joy cons are going to have to be replaced. I can't even imagine that. They're probably but, uh, excited. It's just more sales. Yeah, more yeah. sales. <laughs> see a spike and get, get all the Dark Souls all games on the Switch now. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, so that's uh, <laughs> some funny stuff happening in the Dark Souls arena. Um, as I did mention, we have some fun news coming at the end of our episode about that. But uh, so some fun, weird news that happened with Fortnite this week was. Um, there was some news that they were going to be shutting down the Battle Royale uh, side of uh, Fortnite. So if, if people weren't aware, a lot of people didn't know this, as I found out recently on social media, Fortnite did not start out as a Battle Royale game, or was that even their model when they were initially developing the game? It came, I think, two or three months after the original Fortnite uh, game released for beta. And uh, the joke was is that they were no longer going to be having the Battle Royale uh, part of the game due to a copyright lawsuit that they have going on with PUBG. A lot of people freaked out, and maybe you're one of the people that listening that freaked out about this, and it is not true. It was more of a joke um, kind of being had. Um, there is some lawsuits that um, I guess uh, Blue Hole is pursuing. I don't think it's going to turn into much at this point, but uh, there was a lot of people that were freaking out about this. Yeah. No, n this... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's not. I don't have a big comment on this one. This is silly. They were never going to shut down Fortnite. Epic Games would, you know, they they have every right in the world to keep Battle Royale and Fortnite going. So this is not a serious concern, I don't think. Yeah, can you even copyright like a genre of games? No, I no, you can't. What they're trying to do. Um, I played Save the World when it first came out, and I really had a good time playing it. And then Battle Royale came out, and everybody left. And I was just like, well, this sucks. Because <laughs> <laughs> I had no, I mean, that, that game gets ridiculously difficult the farther you go into it. And you really yeah. need people yeah. to play it with. Right. And everybody was like, no, we're just going to go play this game. I'm like, what? what is happening? My kids love that game. 
I should go tell them this news. Just freak them out. <laughs> <laughs> they're right now. They're upstairs yelling at each other uh-huh. um, across the house, even though they have mics. It's it's a ridiculous <laughs> phenomenon. But yeah, I mean that it just seems like a silly lawsuit. To yeah. Start so with. so a little bit of the background and why uh, Blue Hole may think that they have some kind of a standing here is you got to keep in mind that um, PUBG runs on Epic uh, on the Epic Engine Unreal Four. And so there was, there was some talk that uh, Epic helped out um, in some of the development of PUBG. And in doing so, they stole a lot of the ideas and maybe potentially even some code from Bluehole. And uh, that's kind of where the Battle Royale came from. So to your point, Save the World, um, I kind of timelined this out in, in the tweet storm that I was having a conversation with. Uh, so Fortnite released in July of 2017. PUBG had already been out since I think it's May um, of 2017. And uh, when this whole helping of the engine, of the Unreal 4 engine happened, Battle Royale came out literally two to three months right after that. And that was never in their plans. Uh, the PUBG phenomenon was still going strong. But uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. I mean, like I said, I don't think anything's going to happen. The Battle Royale genre was out before PUBG. It just wasn't uh, done as well as PUBG or as deep and hardcore as PUBG. So it's kind of funny. So also talking about Battle Royale with another game, which was probably some of the biggest good or bad news, I guess, depending on how you look at it, was uh, Black Ops 4 is potentially going to be getting a Battle Royale mode. The Battle Royale mode announcement has not been 100% confirmed. However, the big news from the announcement was is that single player is going away from the Call of Duty Black Ops series. So arguably, the Black Ops stories have been some of the better stories from the most recent Call of Duties. World War II was pretty good. Um, a lot of people liked that. There was a lot of the um, uh, Band of Brothers feeling when you were playing that, and a lot of people did go through it. Historically, most people just literally open the wrapper or digitally download the game and simply go straight to multiplayer. But there seems to be a move uh, at Activision um, to kind of do away with single player altogether. And the rumor that continued from it was a Battle Royale being added to Call of Duty, and this is also happening with the Battlefield franchise that they're looking into it as well. So I took it as kind of like, this could be cool, uh, but my biggest thing was I hope they do not charge $59.99 for a multiplayer only game, especially with the way the industry is moving to a lot of these becoming really cheap in the $29 to $30 range, um, or they're free to play and then you simply download skins or whatever the case is and that's where they make a lot of their money. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but um, I'm gonna be holding off Black Ops kind of, uh, left a lot to be desired for me in the last one. Um, and I've kind of, uh, maybe I'm getting kind of Call of Duty tired, to be honest. Yeah, I think uh, I'm definitely in the same camp with Call of Duty. I, I'm not planning on buying Blops 4 um, at all. Blops. 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 <laughs> Blops. It's terrible sounding, isn't it? Um, but, you know, if you look at the pillars of the Call of Duty titles over the past few years, it's single player, multiplayer, and zombies. And what Treyarch has said is that this is going to be a bigger focus on multiplayer and zombies. They have not officially confirmed the Battle Royale mode, but uh, it's we're basically considering it confirmed. Multiple industry sources are saying it. And that Raven Software, who, if you remember, did the uh, Modern Warfare remastered multiplayer and usually is a support studio for Call of Duty titles, they are uh, working on the Battle Royale mode. So. I don't really care about Call of Duty single player campaigns personally. Um, I know a percentage of people will on this, and I've seen some feedback on social media that um, they will be skipping the, the title if it doesn't have a campaign, especially if they charge $60 to your point, Bert. But in my opinion, just for me, if they actually expand multiplayer and put in a full uh, battle royale mode and expand zombies, and what I mean by that is, you know, we're, we typically get multiplayer with 10 maps. And then there's a season pass for 50 bucks or whatever, where you, you know, you get three map packs with three maps each. And that formula to me is extremely stale. Um, If they did something like, you know, said it's going to have 15 multiplayer maps at launch. um, And then it's going to have another 10 that are going to be free over the course of uh, its lifetime, you know, over the next year and zombies the same way. And battle Royale is going to continue to be expanded upon for $60. Then I, I might be interested, but um, if they try to sell it for 60 bucks, with its current offering just without a campaign, then I'm not interested at all. So this is Activision, right? Yeah, so Activision's publisher, Treyarch, is the developer of Blobs 4. Right, so 
it's going to be 60 bucks and probably <laughs> 40 dollars for the season pass so i'm probably going to have to uh-huh. i mean really your investment in this game is probably going to be 100 dollars just for the game mm-hmm. battle no royale similar. will be a dlc mode yeah and yeah it'll be a dlc plus all the you know extra stuff that you can you know earn with you know your call of duty tokens or whatever you get new skins and stuff other oh, yeah this is this is a huge money if it's 60 dollars. i mean even if it's not i'm not gonna buy it because i don't play call of duty i play the single player you know i they're okay you know and usually the only reason i buy it is because my kids i game share and i'll uh i'll let them play it but short of that i mean i don't even know if i'd you know pick this up for that it's Activision is going to get you, man. I mean, they're just, <laughs> they, oh, it's all they want. It's all they want is money. Hmm. I mean, this is, a, this is, this is stupid. I mean, I understand it from like a development point. If you want to focus, you know, your bread and butter, and this is what people play it for the, you know, most part, they play it for the multiplayer, they play it for the zombies. And I don't know how the battle royale work with it. Um, I mean, they're usually well put together games, you know, their, their, their production volume seems you know, usually pretty high as far as, you know, just graphics and, you know, but no, nope, this is not going to happen. <laughs> so that's that's <laughs> the other happening. point you touch on is Battle Royale, if you think about just the concept, 100 people, big map, um, open weapons, vehicles, Call of Duty's engine, we don't even know if it can support that um, right. without a ton of development. The Call of Duty are small maps, Twitch gameplay shooting, um, very fast paced, there's no vehicle play. Um, you know, there's a lot that goes that seems counter to what Call of Duty is from a Battle Royale model. So, um, you know, the other rumor, of course, is that Battlefield's doing Battle Royale, which seems to make a lot more sense as they have the large maps, they have the vehicle play. Um, they already have that kind of development there. So I, I don't know what they're going to do here, but I, E3 is going to be real interesting this year. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. thing I did want to mention uh, before we jump uh, to different stuff is I, if you think about it, Treyarch's been working on this title for om- almost three years now. So if they have scrapped single player and this was their original intent, uh, I have a feeling we're going to be seeing a very different Call of Duty it, uh, looking game. So that's the other funny thing, though, is they actually made a public statement saying that the single player campaign they were working on just uh, wasn't coming together in time. So to your point, wow. they've been working on this for three two and years. a half years, three years. Yeah. What the hell's going on over there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's it's even weirder because all they do is focus on the Blops series. I mean, the, the last game that they did that was not a Black Ops was World at War, and right. uh, that was a long time ago. So um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's going to look cool or not. I, I just have a feeling, kind of like when we saw World War II announced at E3, everybody was just amazed at the the war mode that is in the game. They're like, oh, you got to play this, this new. Um, but there was already kind of some versions of that in previous games and even in Battlefield games. So it wasn't really that revolutionary once you start playing the game. But um, I think we're going to see a very different type, a uh, very different looking Call of Duty. The quarter shooting that we've gotten used to where the maps, you know, you have a hard time putting more than six on six on each team. I think that's going to change a lot. So I, I think we're going to see something completely different than we have before. They kind of have to. Because like I was personally saying, if it's the same Call of Duty, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be passing on it um, eventually. I don't know. Call of Duty still surprises me on how much they sell every year. They're the highest selling shooter um, around, and there's nothing even touching it in the sales charts if you, outside of like Overwatch. But that's a whole different you know, multiplayer-only game. So this is going to put the game in a whole new genre. Well, and it's, it's funny you mention Overwatch because one of the stranger rumors, which has not been confirmed uh, by any insider sources, is that the... Uh, the multiplayer in, in Blobs 4 is going to have an Overwatch kind of feel to it. Um, what that means, I don't know. Just in my head, I'm speculating that that means it's going to go back to more of those uh, kind of individual character types or classes, you know, that you can select that have unique abilities and things of that nature. Um, so I don't know. Um, all they've said is forget what you know about Call of Duty. So we'll see. You know, you know what it sounds like to me is that, you know, the what you said, Ains, about you know, getting rid of the story or wasn't coming together. What that means to me was this, this giant golden carrot sitting over here <laughs> that's Fortnite and PUBG. And it's like, oh, yeah, the single player, it's not coming together very well, but we can do that and make a crap load of money. So that's what we're going to tell everybody. And <laughs> sorry, single player people, you're out. It yeah. could be. And it's probably cheaper to develop. Single player oh, campaign is not 
yep. cheap to develop, especially with voice actors and mocap and everything yep. you have to do for that scripting. So. Yeah, pretty deep. So let's talk about a developer that claims that their next game is not going to suck. So <laughs> that <laughs> was it, actually... Isn't that thing. all of them? <laughs> yeah. Uh. Uh, I think uh, this developer is even funnier because their last game sucked. Um, and the reason I say this is because of that last game sucking, there's a lot of people concerned that this next game is going to suck. So this was actually the headline, and we are talking about Bioware. <laughs> so I, I have they, you on camera now saying that the last game sucked, and we know what game that was. We're, we're not going to mention this, and Dan, you can't say this <laughs> name, so don't even <laughs> mention this name. But so uh, Casey Hudson uh, from Bioware is reassuring fans that Anthem won't suck. Um, and I, I guess I have to say the name now just due to the news article and how it was mentioned. Uh, they and said they took... Drama. Uh, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> you got like witch coming back, you know, in my eye. But um, so they said that they looked at the kind of the downsides of Andromeda, the storytelling, the characters, the DLC that never happened. Corian arc, that should have happened. But um, stuff like that, they've looked at that. And then with all the Anthem development issues, Casey Hudson had to kind of come out and do some cleanup from that. So they did mention that they are looking through everything. They're doing second double checks. And it might even be a bigger reason as to why Anthem has seen some delays. So hopefully this is good news. Casey Hudson's a pretty good dude. A lot of people like him in the industry. He's not one to kind of be known as kind of a fake or kind of just a salesman as other front men for developers are. But uh, this is hopefully good news. I know that we've been excited for Anthem. I mean, it was hard not to be excited for Anthem when you saw that trailer at E3. But hopefully this is good news. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I played all the way through Andromeda because I love Mass Effect. Ugh. It, I mean, it had its moments. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It had its moments. There were times where I was like, okay, this is all right. But I hated everybody. I hated every single person in the story. Not even one person. I was like, oh, this guy's got, no, he sucks. They, it was just, when you when you sat there and you read off all the stuff that went wrong in the development, that was pretty much the whole game. Like, okay, this is wrong. Okay, so basically storytelling, everything, it's it was terrible. Just just the, uh, all the glitches and stuff. I mean, I could look past that if you have a decent game. Also, I think the problem was, you know, there was such a high standard and a high bar to clear with, the Mass Effect series uh, trilogy before that, that it was, it was doomed to fail. I mean, they, they could have done a few things, you know, save the Quarians, the hashtag. I missed. Oh, gosh, I mean, there were so <laughs> many things that could have been added to it. It doesn't seem like it would be that hard to do. But you know, they they've had all the internal problems. It is what it is. That's that's. Will it suck? I don't know. Anthem looked awesome last year at E3. That was one of the games I saw that I was like, man, that looks very, very similar to Mass Effect. As yeah, well, far the, as, you know. The funny thing there, right, is it, it's part of why people say Andromeda sucked or, or didn't live up to the first trilogy, like you said, is that it wasn't the same team. Casey Hudson's team, the Mass right. Effect trilogy team, is the team making Anthem. So yeah. um, they yeah. kind of handed that development off for, and we've talked about Andromeda at length. That's why we're laughing about yeah. it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I don't know. I, I think on this front, um, I hope it's going to do well. I think Bioware knows it has to do well to, to kind of bring their reputation back up. And uh, EA has said that it is going to be at EA play in, uh, in June. So we'll certainly know in less than two months. Yeah, this is one game that I hope they continue to delay until it's ready. So if uh, I, don't, I hope they don't rush it for Q1, Q2 of 2019, just to kind of say we got it out. Um, I'm really tired of seeing games that are launching broken, um, and then they fix it throughout the next few months after. I think uh, Bioware is not one of the developers that can get away with doing that, as others have, like Ubisoft and um, even Bethesda to a certain extent. They can get away with that because they have so many titles. Bioware does not have an excuse right now. And after uh, uh, Mass Effect, you can't do it again. So uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, uh, hopefully we get our hands on it at E3. Uh, and they surprise us again with some amazing content, but whatever on that. <laughs> yeah, uh, so so, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say, yeah, so there's actually been quite a bit of movement um, on the developer side, more so than usual over the past couple of weeks. So nothing we uh, you know, need to really go into depth in here because we don't understand the depth of it. But a couple of big things to be aware of. Is, so the former head of Crystal Dynamics, so you know, team responsible for the Tomb Raider reboot in 2013 and Rise of the Tomb Raider, Daryl Gallagher uh, has joined Microsoft Studios. So that's an interesting one because it went from uh, third party to first party, obviously. 
Um, X Naughty Dog lead designer um, has joined Insomniac. So again, uh, James Cooper, who was with a uh, first party studio in Naughty Dog for Sony, left to go third party um, with Insomniac. And then the director of Hearthstone, um, a huge, huge game for Blizzard, incredibly popular, makes a ton of money for them. Uh, the director of that game has left Blizzard actually to form his own studio. So, um, you know, outside of uh, the Bioware news we were discussing, these are three rather big, uh, you know, shifts in the uh, in the industry. I don't know what you guys think about any of these in particular. I know nobody on that list, but <laughs> I'm gonna say this: you know, I'm, I'm excited. You know, it, it's always good to see people kind of shifting around and bringing their different ideas and stuff to different places. As far as Hearthstone goes, I've never played it. I've heard of it. I've played WoW. Don't know if it's the same thing. <laughs> I have no idea what Hearthstone is. Oh, Hearthstone, is the, um, Hearthstone. It's, it's the card game. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I know that now. Yeah. yeah, no interest from that whatsoever. But <laughs> <laughs> the other ones, you know, actually look all right. You know, um, what's the James Cooper going to Insomniac? Now, is he going to do stuff with the new game coming out with Spider Man, or is he? something he's the a lead designer right. so probably not right I no, mean, that's done right, right. okay done, that makes sense so. yeah yeah Daryl hopefully Gallagher. sunset overdrive 2 you hear me james yeah make it, it will, happen we will see <laughs> <laughs> every other week so it'd be good for him to listen to you right now and so that'd be good so. <laughs> but no uh, I, I naughty dog has seen a ton of changes in their staff over the last couple of years i mean we when uncharted 4 was being developed we saw people falling off all over the place there so i think people are just kind of moving around I mean, you kind of have to if you think about your own personal life you can't really stay at a company forever without getting that um movement in your position or in your roles without kind of getting some change but uh i think it's good i mean it's good to, as, as dan said to get some of that new blood at different areas yeah so Let's talk about some rumors. So these are rumors, and I do want to preface that as we talk about these next few, because um, we usually like to not talk about rumors, but some of these have been in the news. And so we do talk about if they've been confirmed, if they're fake, whatever they are. I'm going to shoot through these really quick. So Kingdom Hearts 3 um, still has a launch date of uh, 2018. So Ains has been eagerly anticipating this one to come out. Um, it's still rumored to be coming out, and there was kind of a leak regarding a due date or a launch date, I should say, of November 1st. So we heard a ton about Kingdom Hearts. Uh, then we didn't hear anything about it for a long time. Then there was a teaser trailer that launched at uh, one of the Japanese conferences that was massive. Um, and then now they're teasing things again from the game. So I know Ains is super excited about that oh, one. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> another big piece of news, and me and Dan, actually all three of us are massive Bioshock fans. Um, I have it as one of my banners and numerous social medias. I think, Dan, you do too. Yeah. Um, and then Ains, is, I mean, we've played Bioshock how many times? Um, just numerous times. I've played Infinite three times. The original one, probably six or seven times. But the news is, is that there's been one that has been secretly in development, um, kind of in the background. A lot of the staff from the original games is back kind of developing it. Um, we don't have any details. There's no screenshots that have leaked. There's no uh, details as to who specifically from that staff is working on it. But the rumor is, is that we're gonna see something, even if it's a teaser trailer with 30 seconds of maybe a title flashing at E3. Um, but we'll see what that happens. There's no confirmation at all about that. The biggest thing that we can all say is that we're mega stoked about it. It would be, we've always joked that the original Bioshock or even Infinite in this current gen would look amazing. I can't even imagine Bioshock in true 4K realized with all the tools and engines that exist today, that would just be something mind blowing. So once again, still a rumor, nothing confirmed. We haven't really seen anything coming from it. Um, Perfect Dark is another rumor that is currently out and about. And this was uh, coming from the Rare account. So uh, Rareware, I guess from back in the old days, Rare now, um, has been uh, tweeting some pretty funny tweets. And I'll be showing the tweet on the screen probably somewhere around here or right here as to the tweet um, <laughs> to kind of show you what it is. But this has been rumored as well. A lot of people are thinking that Perfect Dark is going to be an exclusive on the Xbox stage. Um, we've talked about it last year, and we kind of were hoping that it would be an exclusive. But this would be kind of big um, to have Joanna Dark back um, uh, in the role of a new realized Perfect Dark. So another game that we'd love to see. And the last rumor that is kind of we don't care, or maybe we do care. Maybe Dan, you do, so I don't want to speak for you. No. But Watch Dogs 3 is uh, potentially coming back uh, or has been in development and is going to get teased at E3 as well. 
Watch Dogs 2 was not exactly the best received game uh, from Ubi uh, when, um, I guess if you look at the games recently, it's probably the least selling title that was supposed to sell really well. I enjoyed the first one. The second one I have on my, uh, they're still in the wrapper, but I haven't even started and I have no interest to start it the more and more I try to do it. So really quick, guys, anything on the rumors that y'all want to touch on before? I know, Ains, you've been eager to talk to us about Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, I was going to talk, but then you said Kingdom Hearts and I fell asleep. So I kind of missed the rest <laughs> of them. But uh, Bioshock, um, everything you said, uh, one of my favorite games of all time. I'm actually writing an article on it right now. And, um, you know, I, I just hope that they are able to create a Bioshock game with the same level of narrative uh, without Ken Levine. Because remember, Ken Levine led Bioshock and Infinite, and he is not working on the title. We know that for sure. Um, Perfect Dark, it, it's about time. I mean, really, what what the hell have they been doing with that IP? Um, you've got an industry now that, you know, the loss of Metal Gear and no Splinter Cell, although we think a new one of those is coming too. You've got the stealth genre. You've got a big push in the industry and uh, even outside other industries for, you know, women and um, women in gaming and lead, you know, female protagonists like Lara Croft. Um, you, you've got this sci-fi universe. You have all this sitting right here on this IP, and you're just not doing anything with it. Get it together. Um, and then Watch Dogs 3, I don't know. Watch Dogs 2, I really wanted to play. I bought it for the Xbox, thinking that it would get an X enhancement. It hasn't. Uh, believe it or not, it doesn't seem like that long ago, but going from games like God of War or Far Cry 5 or these re more recent games, Assassin's Creed Origins, that are in 4K and just look stunning. When you go back and play Watch Dogs 2 that's sitting there in 900p um, and has frame rate issues, it is, it's unbearable. It, it feels like you're just going back a generation or two. Um, so I, I haven't gotten very far in it, but um, I don't know. I'll see what Watch Dogs 3 is. I really liked one, like you said, so we'll see. Yeah, I mean, aside from I mean, Bioshock, that's, that's my game, man. So... <clears throat> I have the same kind of concerns though. Like with without Ken Levine, you know, I, I just don't know how it's going to go. I know two, he didn't work on two, and so I mean that one for me was kind of the not as good, I guess. You know, it it, it was it, it was still good. I st it was still a Bioshock game, and I still really enjoy playing it. But you can tell just the storytelling in the first one and in Infinite were just so good. You know, and it made you you know kind of think about stuff and. I still had to, I had to play infinite like five or six times before I realized what was going on. I still don't know if I know what was going on. Um, <laughs> what happened? Yeah, I have no idea. There's some good no videos idea. out there about it, which I, I've blew seen me some away. of those. Like, and I'm just like, well, who has time to do these videos <laughs> and think about this stuff? And also what kind of drugs are they taking? Because I want some, that was the best. Some of them are crazy. Kingdom hearts three. I played the first one. Uh, was it for a PlayStation 2 or PlayStation? Yeah, it was like uh, 44 years ago, I think it came yeah. out. So. Yeah, that's that. it was all right. <laughs> but it was, you know, also not my favorite. Perfect Dark, I haven't played that uh, in 84 years. It's, like the main. <laughs> so it's just, it's, just I, it's been forever. And Watch Dogs, I started it and I finally got out of the tutorial and I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I mean, the tutorial was so bad that it didn't tell you what you, you know, so I'm just driving around the city. No idea. Maybe three will be better. You know, I mean, Ubisoft has been kicking butt lately with some of their games. I love Far Cry 5. I love, you know, Assassin's Creed. And actually, I love Ghost Recon. You know, it, it's, it's, they've been doing a really good job. This one is kind of, it's like, oh, yeah, we got this game. Here you go. Just throw it in the middle of everything and see what happens. But that's about it, man. Yeah, we, we were joking in our last bitcast, funny enough, that uh, Ubisoft has been on such a streak right now that throwing like another game that's not broken into the mix would uh, uh, would be uh, good for them, I guess. And uh, we're not even sure if Watch Dogs has the fan base for a part three unless they do something dramatically different. So who knows? Uh, but that's that's kind of the rumors uh, been going on, guys. It's, you've probably seen tweets about it if you're listening. And um, I said, oh, yeah, that's what's going on there. But all still rumored, nothing confirmed anywhere. Um, we'll report back, obviously, and we always in our news that we update uh, daily on our website. Check it out there. But we'll talk about the uh, past couple of weeks of releases. Going to zoom through these really quick, and then we'll talk about what we're currently playing since uh, we're we're very long speaking today, as you can imagine, which is great. I mean, it's, 
some people like the long podcast. But so the big one we talked about at the beginning, God of War, um, is now moved up to one of the highest reviewed games um, in recent history. Funny enough, I think it's this year's uh, Breath of the Wild from review scores, but it's currently scoring at a ninety-five. I don't feel um, it's overrated, Bert. So it's a little different from Breath of the Wild. Jesus. <laughs> Moving along. As I said, I was going to talk about new releases and move on. Uh, but 95 Mighty. So if uh, this was what the critics were kind of re- reviewing as the game did release, the score has gone up even higher uh, for people that didn't get to play it early before release date. I expect it to go even higher as people finish the game because obviously a lot of reviewers don't finish games and they pick a score based on 50 or 60% of the game being done. So I, I would re- review it really high myself, but we'll get to our review a little bit later. Another game that released recently was Yakuza 6. Now, this has been out in Japan for a while, I think about a year and a half. Translations take forever, all the different things take forever. It did release on PlayStation 4 recently, also scoring really high. Um, It is kind of a niche game, though. If you haven't played any of them, there's five of them you have to catch up with to kind of get to where we are in 6. But those are being worked on as well to bring to where we are. It is scoring, I believe, a 92 Mighty, so another very high-scoring Yakuza game. And just really quick to touch on, Call of Duty World War II, the latest DLC, has come out. It is not being received very well. Um, It's only out on PlayStation 4 due to their having the exclusivity with the DLC, but it is scoring at about a 74, 75 on Open Critic and Metacritic. So I guess it depends on if you've played it yet or not. We'll see, but not the highest reviewed game. So Ains, you were wanting to talk a second ago. What are you playing right now? So Breath of the Wild. Um, No, wait, that's not it. Um, I'm (laughs) playing... Uh, God of War, you know, God of War is going to be my focus. I knew that going in. I did finish last week uh, Far Cry 5. Um, I really like Far Cry 5. It, it got a little same Z as you started to put more than 25, 30 hours into it. Uh, like in the every sense, Far Cry. Yeah, you kind of get used <laughs> to the, the side activities. And, you know, eventually I just wanted to finish the game. But it was worth finishing. Um, the uh, the final kind of lead up was was uh, kind of you know interesting and um, the ending was excellent. In fact, it was rather shocking. Uh, I I saw a lot of people on social media you know kind of giving Ubisoft praise over the ending, which is funny um, because I completely agreed. I kind of sat there during the ending and I was like, wow, they really went this direction with it. But it was good. Uh, God of War. We could continue to talk about. We kind of, due to our excitement of the title, the three of us kind of talked about early on. There's not much more to say there. Like I said, I just want to play it more. I'm loving that so far. Um, we continue to play a lot of PUBG. In fact, I'll probably be online on PUBG in just a few hours uh, for the night. Um, the big news on PUBG, which is cool, and we didn't really touch on, is that the uh, the test server is opening for Miramar, the uh, the desert map on Xbox on Tuesday. And alongside that test server uh, opening up for everyone, um, uh, PUBG Core mentioned that the um, additional bug fixes and optimizations, the largest since launch, are coming as well. So PUBG on the Xbox side should be in a lot better shape, uh, hopefully later this week with some more content as well. So looking forward to that. Dan, what's in your consoles these days? What are you playing? Uh, Well, God of War, obviously. (laughs) Get too crazy into that. I have been jumping back on Sea of Thieves a little bit. Nice. Just, just playing, you know, it, that game for me is best in small doses. You know, you kind of go out, do a couple missions. I usually play by myself. It's just kind of relaxing. Um, I kind of started uh, that new I Hope game. The oh, one yeah. uh, they, were, they gave um, 100% of the proceeds go to uh, a charity for kids dealing with cancer and families dealing with cancer. Um, I'm giving away a couple of those on Twitter right now too. Um, it's just, it, it's, it is what it is. It's a pretty simple game. It's $10, but you know, it's more of the donation that's, you know, important. And it, it's a, looks like to me a really easy, uh, thousand achievement score, really easy. Um, also finished Hellblade nice. on the Xbox. I played it on the PS4, then something else came out and, so I was like, I'll just buy it for the Xbox, see what is. And once I started actually getting into it and getting past where I was in the PS4 version, I just kept going and going. That combat was outstanding. I, I mean, it, it it was it wasn't like over the top, like you know, difficult. Which sometimes God of War for me gets it gets a little crazy, but you know, it, it was it was perfect, and it was just it was a gorgeous game. You know, very heavy-handed in parts, but it was also, you know, I understand what the message was behind it. 
Um, gosh, I, what else have I been playing? Just little games here and there. I started the uh, Batman Telltale games. Uh, oh. The second one. The second one. I played through the first one. And uh, I, th- I need to get back into that too. So I'm, sh- uh, I'm sure Bert's got some comments because he was playing the Batman. He just finished Hellblade. So it seems like similar okay. alleys here. I don't know. That's well, pretty much all I've been doing. So yeah, I, I played the original Batman, the season one of it, and I was really let down by Telltale. I mean, Telltale has just been all over the place with me on good stuff. But um, yeah, so I did finish Arkham Asylum uh, last time we had talked, and um, I went back to that one to play him from Rocksteady uh, a couple of weeks ago. But the big games that I finished recently are the South Park Fractured Butthole. I split those two words. You Finish tried. that up, and I've uh, been writing on the review and should have some footage on that uh, by next Friday. So be on the lookout for that one. Really enjoyed it. If you like Stick of Truth, you got to play this one. Uh, and then I didn't have anything to play and didn't want to jump into anything big before God of War because then I'd be distracted. But started Ori um, in the Blind Forest. Now, I played this one in the past, and I grew really upset because of the way you save in the game. You have to manually save every single time. And I would get really far and I'd forget to save and then I'd die and then I have to go back like 10 minutes to where I was before. And I thought I'd maybe broke a controller or something back in the day because (laughs) of how many times I had to do it. But I am probably about 80% done with the game. When I need a break from God of War, I will be probably jumping to that to finish it off. It's a fantastic game. Um, It probably would have been in my running for game of the year in the year that it releases. Is that 2015, 2016 maybe? 16, I think. Yeah, Yeah. Um, it is fantastic. The level design, the graphics. Speaking of, I can't wait to play the next one in full HDR 4K. It is going to be mind-blowing, just the visuals in it. Um, And then last but not least, um, I did actually play God of War 3 to get ready for God of War 4. Um, I guess we're just God of War uh, where we are today and obviously God of War. So my uh, games have been all over the place. I did try like three or four different games in between God of War releasing and I just didn't couldn't stick to one. So I had game ADD for about a week. <laughs> uh, you so, know, on Ori, um, you can fix the saving issue by just not forgetting to save. I don't know if you tried that. <clears throat> yeah, so we're going to go ahead and move over to our... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hold on one second. There was one game I forgot to mention is, um, and, and I know this is funny to mention for some, but Super Mega Baseball 2. Um, it, the reason I bring it up is because it is a game that is hugely enjoyable, even if you don't like baseball. Uh, my friends will tell you that I am not a baseball fan. I often make fun of it for whatever reason. Um, but regardless, the game is fantastic. It's in closed beta right now, and I've been part of the closed beta. Um, not allowed to post impressions or videos or screenshots or anything of it, but I will tell you it's fantastic. And it was just announced today that uh, the May Games with Gold on Xbox Super Mega Baseball 2 is going to be free on May 1st when it launches. So like they did with Mega Baseball 1 on the PlayStation 4, um, it's launching as free on the Xbox. So it's normally going to be a $30 game. Like I said, even if you don't like baseball, check it out because it's just a ton of fun to play. And to confirm, it's Games with Gold, right? Not Game Pass? Correct. Games with Gold. So anyone you know on live can download it. And please do. Please check it out. The developer, Metalhead Software, really good guys. Um, they're a small studio. They've been working on this one for a long time. And, uh, you know, good to support it. Sweet. We'll have to give that one a try. And so play some multiplayer together, too. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So let's get to our main topic, the, the meat of our uh, bidcast this week. We did want to talk a little bit about uh, kind of Sony's direction and where they're going with their exclusives. So if you are not part of the fanboy war and have multiple consoles and kind of like to play the best that every console offers, um, it's really hard to ignore the fact that Sony's uh, first party exclusives are mainly third person experiences that are single player. So um, we're going to kind of discuss that and kind of share our thoughts. Obviously, we're not going to be bashing any uh, console whatsoever, whether it be Sony, Nintendo, or Xbox, but we kind of wanted to have an objective conversation about it and what it really means in the gaming industry. So um, Ains, you want to kind of kick us off on a few points that you wanted to kind of share? Yeah, so first things first is, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk across social media or the industry about exclusives uh, and PlayStation 4 exclusives. So right away, we want to make the distinction that there's a a big difference between a console exclusive and a first party IP or first party exclusive. So give you an example, you know, a game like uh, Persona 5 is made by Atlas. They're a third party. It's only on the PlayStation 4, so it's a PS4 exclusive, but it is not Sony uh, developed nor published. 
and it is um, you know not a first party IP. So we're we're talking more here about, or we're going to talk more about um, Sony first party IP. So that would include developers like Naughty Dog, uh, obviously makers of Uncharted, Last of Us, and upcoming Last of Us Two. Uh, ben Studio, which made the Uncharted game for the uh, Vita, and they are now working on Days Gone, which we recently talked about was delayed to last year. Uh, you have the Infamous franchise, um, and the Infamous developer. Why is the developer name escaping me? Um, Sucker Cameron. Punch. Thank you, thank you. Sucker Punch is uh, Sony first party. They're working on Ghosts of Tsushima, uh, which we saw a teaser for um, rather recently, and then you've got. Um, uh, Gorilla, which you know used to make the Killzone franchise, which was originally developed to be a Halo competitor, um, and as a big Halo fan, um, that never came to fruition. But uh, it, obviously, they have the talent there because they created Horizon Zero Dawn, another fantastic title. Um, but the, really, what we were kind of talking about is, or want to talk about, is the fact that you know if you look across Sony first-party IPs um, from Days Gone to Uncharted to Last of Us to Horizon to what Ghost of Tsushima looks like, um, Infamous. These are all third-person games. They are all narrative-driven in some form. And overwhelmingly, they don't focus on multiplayer at all. You know, Last of Us and Uncharted have multiplayer, but they're kind of a, an addendum mode or an ancillary mode. It's not really the main focus of the game. It's not what the games are remembered for. So really, what I wanted to kind of pose to you guys as a conversation point is, We've heard a lot, and God of War, obviously, is uh, the biggest right now, which we've mentioned about 20 times so far in this podcast. Um, is Sony doing the right thing? And it seems like it they are, given the conversation. But are they doing the right thing by just developing single-player content only and letting third parties and cross-platform titles fill the multiplayer role on their console? Uh, whether it be Call of Duty, Battlefield, you know, all those other big uh, multiplayer games, PUBG or uh, Fortnite, excuse me, um, because they really have moved away from developing multiplayer in-house. Um, is that a good or a bad thing? Would we like to see something different or, you know, is third party good enough in that sense? I mean, I think it is. I really do. I mean, they, the the third person single player experience, I mean, that's that's it works for me. I mean, it, it seems like, like you said, all those third parties are kind of filling that void. I mean, if you look at Xbox, basically Gears and uh, Halo are your big multiplayer first party games. Um, but Call of Duty, Battlefield, like you mentioned, Fortnite, you know, they're, they're, they're huge and they're not system sellers and they don't need to be, obviously you got to make games that are going to sell your system. And, you know, as far as multiplayer goes, for me anyway, um, I, I'm not a huge, I like more co-op, I guess. I'm more of a Ghost Recon person, you know, or, uh, you know, anything with, with, with a co-op uh, uh, alternative to it. So not really the uh, PvP. No, I, I, no, PvP and me are, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not good. Okay. This is, this is the 42 year old man here that lost all of his reflexes and I can barely see, you know, I'm sitting here playing a game and my son's like, Hey, it's right over there. I've got a 70 inch QLED screen. I can't see these things. My eyes are so bad. So, so no, I mean, I, I stopped really playing like sea of thieves. That's fun to me. You know, if, if you're with somebody else, uh, far cry five, I've been playing a lot of co-op with my buddy, even though I finished the game, that's pretty fun to me, but you know, that's a third party game. Um, you know, that, that's kind of what I'm looking for as an older gamer. Um, I look for that single player experience and Sony's got it in spades. It seems like as compared to, uh, as far as first party goes, compared to xbox now i still play assassin's creed i still play like i said far cry 5 ghost recon first you know first single player game i mean whatever it is I, that's what I, that's what my bread and butter is it's it's less of the uh, the uh, multiplayer than it is the single player you gotta you gotta come with some good content and not every one of those that you mentioned is you know giant bombshell i mean last of us obviously god of war and charter 4 you know the horizon zero dawn that's one of the reasons i actually got a ps4 i was always wanting to and uh i never did i was going to get you know i always wanted it for mlb 
because I'm a big baseball guy. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> you know, and all these other games were just kind of like icing on the cake. Well, then I started playing it and I was like, okay, this is, they've got a lot of good games. You know, why, you know, I've been missing out on a ton of this stuff. And I think, you know, where the console war comes in is people just don't realize it. And, you know, they have this weird loyalty to a certain brand, you know, and and they make up stuff half the time. It's like, well, this thing, I don't care about resolution. You know what? I can't tell the difference. I can't, I have a, you know, I, I, I played, you know, if you look at the screenshots on Twitter of God of War, you know, ba- on the base PS4 versus the PS4 Pro, no idea. I can't tell the difference. I can't, you know, so it, it's, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with, you know, having that box, that, that console, you know, almost exclusively for the single player experiences. You know, my ex I have sitting here for, you know, all my third party stuff that you know, I'm going to play. Most of my friends are there and that's what it basically comes down to. And they're doing something right because they're making a ton of money and, you know, they're, they're winning NPDs. I don't even know what the hell that means. Don't even care. <laughs> you know, that's why I see that on Twitter all the time. Don't know. Don't care. You know, for me, it's, it's just the experience. You know, if it has to be a third person, you know, not necessarily, but it seems like, yeah, you know, I, you know, when you said this was your main topic, I was like, man, they do have a lot of third person. Yeah. And that, that's actually it's the funny crazy. thing is I don't think people really have taken a step back to look at that. Really. Sony's focusing almost solely on third person, single player games um, through all that, throughout all their studios. So it's, it's kind of interesting in that sense. Yeah. The thing that I was going to say is, um, Tains's point on a uh, a first party developer versus a third party developer. A lot of times you'll hear um, Sony people that you know defend Sony till the end, uh, talking about third party exclusives um, that are exclusive to the Sony console that aren't even exclusives anymore. Um, so like Kingdom Hearts Three is coming out to both consoles. You have um, uh, Near uh, Automata was actually available on PC and PlayStation. So obviously you have some of the PC crowd saying, hey, that's I, I play that. Neo is also available in, in different areas as well. So to Ains's point, I mean, it's interesting that they have been focusing on this, uh, this single player experience. And it's really weird when you look at the sales charts too. So when you look at exclusives, um, they sell pretty well. I mean, they sell somewhere between the one to three million units um that are exclusives but outside of uh horizon zero dawn and uncharted 4 everything else that sony sells really 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 well at is cross-platform uh your fifas your call of duties um mlb looks amazing by the way i I wish i cared about the baseball simulation experience a bit more but it actually doesn't sell that well when you look at all the cross-platform stuff so for me, it's mainly the narrative that Sony drives is like, hey, you got to play all these exclusives here. But with the, well, I guess God of War now is rumored to be selling better than Uncharted 4 was at this point. And that will probably be in the top five, if at least seven or eight uh, highest selling games that Sony sells. So, um, yeah, I think also, I think the audience of who is playing on the PlayStation 4 um, means a lot too. I think some of us older folks, and as as weird as that sounds, I think we prefer uh, more of the story driven um, experience with a mix of multiplayer. Or I think a lot of the younger um, audience prefers only multiplayer. Um, so it it really comes down to who's playing it and who the uh, the console buyer is. Because right now I, I think it's important to to kind of get the most out of all all platforms and not stick to one. But it has, yeah, As when you see them written down on a list and you look at, uh, I mean, the only other exclusives that um, are going to be the non-first person, um, sorry, non-third person first party that you're going to come across and also third party are like your Gran Turismo, your MLB, as you mentioned. You have that licensing going on uh, for the Major League Baseball license. So um, I don't know. It was interesting to kind of see and see it written down. Xbox takes a very different take. And obviously Nintendo is <laughs> just cartoon characters all the time, I think. <laughs> I think uh, any specific Sony player or Xbox only player, you can supplement Nintendo in there, but I think they're attracting different audiences at the same time. A Nintendo seller or Nintendo is not looking at Sony and go, we got to do that. We got to get that photorealistic looking thing in there and where we got to have a halo killer. I mean, it's just not going to happen and at the same time. Microsoft and Sony are not saying we got to make a Mario clone or something like that. Um, but I don't know. It's different. I think it varies on the audience. 
to your point, Dan, um, a lot of my friends play on Xbox. So I picked up an Xbox initially, and I think where your friends are playing are a huge driver as to which console you're going to pick up. And I think it should be one of the main drivers because, you know, if you're all your friends are on Xbox Live and you've got the Sony console, it's like, what am I going to do? Who am I going to play with? Uh, vice versa. Same with Sony. Um, but all very interesting. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the interesting thing here is that if you look at the two biggest franchises on the xbox halo and gears i think forza would probably be bigger than gears right now if you if you're talking in that sense in terms of maybe sales or revenue um but if you look at uh, halo and gears you know they have a very strong world um that is built in those franchises the halo universe is absolutely ridiculous it's massive um and gears is pretty big as well and the narrative in those games is actually quite good um you know, as a Halo fan, I have to put a little asterisk next to Halo <laughs> 5. Um, but, you know, it, it just, there's something um, that Sony is doing right here uh, in the sense that Halo, from a story perspective, probably hasn't really been remembered since Halo 3. You know, Halo 4 is my personal favorite Halo story. But again, it's not something that's setting the industry ablaze. Um, Gears of War 4, I thought was very, very well done. And, uh, you know, I reviewed that game. I love it. We still play it on occasion in multiplayer. But the narrative, again, isn't up to that upper echelon level where it drives a conversation throughout the industry, um, which is exactly what we're seeing with God of War right now. It's exactly what we saw with Last of Us um, and we've seen in some other titles. Um, it's just uh, there's a differentiator there. And, um, you know, I it would be really interesting to see, you know, if... Microsoft and their first party studios could get the narrative and the delivery of those campaigns in Halo 6 or whatever the next Halo game is, or Gears 5, you know, if they could get it to that level, but still do the multiplayer well, um, then it would be a different conversation. Uh, because I love, you know, I'll play Halo multiplayer more than any other multiplayer. I play a ton of Gears, um, play a ton, you know, Forza's is a big one as well for multiplayer with Horizon and even motorsport but there there is something to be said the point i'm making is there is definitely a differentiator between the narrative in games like god of war at least so far and what we're hearing um and last of us one of my favorite games of all time um is a game that you just remember for years uh and i don't think microsoft at this point in time has anything in their um in their lineup that that matches that level yeah one thing i did want to touch on really quick on that was um when you look at God of War, one thing you can't say about God of War is even if it wasn't as gorgeous as it was, or as it is, <laughs> it's not gone yet, as it is, I think the game would still sell on the story. So even if it was maxing out at 1080p um, and 60 frames per second, 30 frames per second, take the visual issue out, I think the story stands on its own as well. So that's something that a lot of uh, Xbox fanboys will tell you, oh, God of War is only selling because it looks awesome. It's it's a Rise clone. Um, it's not. I mean, the story in God of War is fantastic so far. And, and to your point, Ains, I think if we can get narratives like that on the Xbox, I think Xbox can really do something here because the horsepower is there, as we all talk about with the X. Well, and, the, and Last of Us wasn't remembered for its graphics. You know what I mean? I It's the last thing I think about when I think of Last of Us. I think Whoa. about the story. and was that a, Was that a sneaked in pun there? Well, I, if I made one, uh, if, if it was good, I'll take it. I, I don't know. <laughs> I was about to say, was that that slick that it just zoomed by? No, um, it wasn't. I'm I've outwitted myself apparently. But the I, point I, I was I, the point I was making is that it's remembered for obviously the narrative and uh, you know what you go through in that game and experience, and of course the ending. And uh, it'll be one of those games that sits with me forever um, for that reason. So I, I will tell you, Last of Us's visuals were amazing on the PS. No, they were great, but yeah, it, it wasn't I mean, the thing that yeah, sure you know, people remember about the game. Right. I, I mean, but you get a lot of indie games that are coming out. With, you know, when you talk about the narrative, that are so heavy-handed that they're just not fun you know I, I there's several games i played that you know I, mean, I know we're kind of getting a little bit off topic but it, it's just that 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 for me always drives the game i want to experience it that's why i love mass effect and the trilogy that's why i loved bioshock you know it's because it was a good story and the gameplay was good it wasn't anything you know mind-blowing 
as far as gameplay goes, but it was good. I mean, and that and that drives me to want to keep finishing it. I've got so many games that I started and have been like, oh, I can't even do this anymore. Yep. And you know, and then, but eventually I come back. But you know, Hellblade at first was you know kind of that one. It wasn't. I was I was upset. It was just that something else came out. I think that was in November or sometime when Assassin's Creed or you know something like that came out. And you know, I look. I'm looking at this list and it's. You know, Horizon Zero Dawn was amazing. Uh, the Last of Us, I played. I haven't finished it. Which what? Yeah. what? I know. Oh, I'm, off the, um, yeah. I'm off the podcast. I'm off the podcast. No, I, I I played. Listen, here's the thing about the. How Last do you of eject us. someone off of this? <laughs> here's, how, here's the thing. You the problem with that is I've seen your 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 podcast before, and I know you guys like those you know those horror games. I can't do them. All right, I can, like <laughs> Resident Evil. I have it. The new one. It oh, looks seven. amazing. I can't do it. You I can't gotta play do it. it. You I played. It. I played Evil Within two for about six or seven hours, and I was like, "All right, I think oh. I can do this." And then there got to a point where I was like, "Nope, I gotta go change my undies." I mean, that's <laughs> the problem, you know. And that's what Last of Us started doing. As soon as I started with the clickers, or whatever uh, the hell they're called, I was like, yeah, oh, "Man, oh my gosh!" And, and you just I, there was one part that I got so frustrated on that I stopped playing because you know. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm over the fear, but now I'm getting frustrated because I keep getting my butt handed to me every single time. I think but I know it, the it, exact part you're talking about, Dan. So it was, it was in, yeah, it was, it was early on when you meet him. But anyway, I mean, that's that's one of those games I want to get back to because got to. the story was good. I mean, it was really good up until the point where I became a giant wuss. <laughs> so, you know. So if you um, if you think it's good up to that point, wait till you get through the rest of it. Right, <laughs> it, it, it's like pretty blowing my mind. I don't even know, you know, yeah. but like the third party stuff that they got on here. Near, love that game. I was not very good at it, and it took me a long time. And I heard it has like fifteen different endings. I don't have yeah. time for that. <laughs> so, but like Spider Man, uh, Detroit, I'm gonna be buying those day one because it sounds like like Spider Man might overtake god of war for me because i'm just wow. a huge spider-man fan i'm a huge spider-man fan have been since i was a kid you know i've had all the comics but it, it's that's more personal bias you know now if it no, comes it's... out and it sucks you know <laughs> well the, the funny thing there is you're touching on the point right is that near spider-man um these are third-party games um right. This is the fact that the weird thing about Spider-Man is kind of unique in the sense that Sony owns the Spider-Man license, right? Uh, because of Sony Pictures. And so they can make that game, even though Insomniac's making the game. And to make it even more bizarre is that Insomniac is taking some of the kind of, uh, you know, things they learned with Sunset Overdrive, an Xbox exclusive, and put it in Spider-Man, which is now a PlayStation exclusive. So that's a really unique one. But um, yeah, I mean, that that's... As we said, they they they're driving the narrative, um, which is what you were basically just touching on, right? Is these other games right now um, are are the things that people are talking about, and they're talked about as exclusives because they are, even though it's not really often uh, talked about that they're not Sony first party. This is not Sony developing these games, right? Yeah, and it's very possible that some of these games could be coming to other consoles in the future. We saw that with the Crash Bandicoot remaster, or I Hellblade. guess you could Hellblade. Hellblade. Uh, we saw it with uh, No Man's Sky. Um, we, I mean, we see with a lot of these things, they are very potentially timed exclusive. And uh, I think until recently, um, you know, some of these console makers put that in their trailer. They put console exclusive or timed exclusive or whatever you see that in their trailers. Spider-Man, I don't think we'll ever see on Xbox because as Ains mentioned, it's a it's Sony license no, for anything that has... Insomniac yeah. already said outright yeah. that it's it's never coming anywhere else. Yeah. yeah. But uh, like Kingdom Hearts, like I mentioned, that's coming. Um, you can already play Neo on PC. See Wait, you. what? <laughs> you said Kingdom Hearts. I, I'm sorry, I drifted. Uh, uh, you fell asleep. Yep. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Death Stranding. Um, I have no idea what Kojima is going to do. We, I don't even know what Death Stranding is going to end up being like um, when it finally comes out. But I know a lot of people are Kojima excited. knows. <laughs> no, no, you're no. right. He probably doesn't. He has no yeah, idea. we uh, we talked about that on a past uh, uh, bitcast a while ago, actually, because when they announced Death Stranding and now two trailers in, the game wasn't even in full production yet. So they didn't even have I, an engine. Yep. They were putting trailers out for a game they didn't even have an engine for, and people were going nuts. I'm like, what is wrong with people? I don't understand it. 
Yep. And we and we've seen the issues with Final Fantasy VII remake. I mean, uh, who knows? We'll get that one. I know a lot of people are excited about it, but it's it's a long ways away. So. Oh, and it's it's having problems. Like they're going back to the drawing board on we've heard that like it was not coming together in the way they wanted the battle system was different people were complaining about what they were playing the tester so yeah yeah we'll see what happens with that one yeah so we'll see i mean i, I think we we can kind of summarize the fact that you know sony has definitely struck a nerve um they're definitely winning in in this realm of uh single player uh third person um exclusives i think uh they have been driving the narrative of this is kind of what we're doing. Um, we, as we mentioned, there's not really a multiplayer uh, side to this this aspect, whether it be a third person shooter, first person shooter. Uh, we haven't really seen anything from Sony first party of that in a very long time. Um, we hope that the rest of the industry kind of listens. Um, as we mentioned, Nintendo probably doesn't care that that you love this kind of stuff. Microsoft is probably listening. We've heard many times that we're going to see some fun stuff at E3. We hope that they pick up the game somewhere because they're far behind on, on console sales and even software sales. Even some of the stuff that's cross-platform, people still think is exclusive to Sony, even though it's not. Um, so we'll see what happens. I mean, do you guys have anything you guys want to close out on before... We move on to our second favorite category of collectibles. <laughs> um, the only thing I was kind of funny I was going to say, and we'll probably mention this in our upcoming E3 special and coverage, is if you think back to the, I think it was 2015, it might have been 2016, um, the big E3 that Sony got a massive amount of praise for, the big three titles out of that E3 were Death Stranding, which still, here we are two and a half years later, and it's probably still years away. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake, which has no date and no one knows what the hell is going on with it. And Shenmue 3, which was a Kickstarter project that is now being published by a third party. Um, so it's just kind of funny when you look at these lists of these upcoming exclusives, you talk about those. It's like, uh, you know, there's. it's just funny to see that uh, is the point I was making. And I think we can go over to Dan because I got nothing else to say. <laughs> no, man, I mean, <laughs> listen, here's, here's the bottom line. If you're going to put out a good game third person first person whatever it is i'm gonna play it you know if, if it's if it's a good game it kind of trumps everything else and i know being lucky enough to own both consoles or all three of them it, it's 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 good that i have options some people don't you know and that sucks but you know it's just how business is you know and you know when you when you sit there and you see the stuff working and you see you continually winning in several different fronts, then as a businessman, you're going to put your foot down on the throat and you're going to squeeze it. And that's what they're doing. And they're, it's, it's working. That's, that's the best thing for them. You know, I, I don't, like I said, I don't really participate in it too much. So I'm able to play everything. It, it is, I, the, the weird thing about this whole conversation that we had was just, that it's all third person, you know, and I, it just kind of blows my mind still to this point. So, um, but it works and people are playing it. People are buying them. And as long as that keeps happening, then, you know, good on Sony, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that was kind of the funny thing when we looked at it too. And why we had it as a main topic, because when you think about everything being third person and story driven, it's just interesting, but um, yeah, we'll see what happens with the future of Sony. We'll see what happens with the future of Nintendo and Xbox. And uh, yeah, that's our main topic. Hopefully you got something out of it. Um, let's go ahead and look at collectibles. Uh, if you have not watched Ains's uh, unboxing of the Gears of War, uh, Gears of War, <laughs> God of War. <laughs> Every time I think of G-O-W, I think Gears of War, not God of War. As so. it should be. Yeah. As it should be. <laughs> the God of War um, Stonemason unboxing. You only have to look at the thumbnail to go, holy crap, that's a lot of collectibles. So let's talk about it, man. What's, what's going on with your Best Buy cart as you left the store? The oh, other? my gosh, yeah. I didn't even have room behind me to put everything. It was kind of ridiculous. I, I actually um, walked out of the store with three of the big bags of just crap because I picked up the PS4 Pro, the God of War one, uh, the Stonemason edition, which you can see a piece of here behind me. Um, the NECA came out with an 18-inch um, collectible Kratos figure. Um, so one of those that's almost like a statue, you know, quality. It retailed for like $130. 
Um, and then also you can see here, Atreus and uh, Kratos little pop figures too. I still collect the pops for all the video game guys. Um, long story short, yeah, as you said, uh, thank you. The um, unboxing of the Stonemason edition is up on our site and our YouTube channel if you want to check that out. I thought it was really well done. I know you got it too, Bert. Um, you can kind of see the statue behind me here, Kratos and Atreus. It came with a whole bunch of other goodies, the steel books, some digital content, and uh, pretty good value overall. Um, I enjoy it. And um, the only other thing I've gotten recently, which you can see here, I don't have it turned on because I figured it would reflect too much, or um, the icons light. Uh, for PlayStation, and I did an unboxing of those as well. So this is just a little kind of shelf light of the PlayStation icons that you can, uh, you know, put up and, and light up if you like. But there's a little unboxing video I did of that as well. So I kind of rambled there, but um, yeah, God of War is kind of all over the place in my game room right now. Dan, do you have anything for us? I know it's kind of short notice, but I don't, I don't know how big of a collector you are with collectibles. I'm not. Um, the only real collectibles I have are stuff that my son gives me from his loot crates that he doesn't want. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think I've got a little Bioshock Big Daddy that I yeah. got from loot and that new uh, Sea of Thieves statue that came with one. Oh, yeah, okay. And then I think I got a uh, a set of Doom shot glasses, and that is the extent <laughs> of my collecting. <laughs> Gamer, not collector. Yourself. Yeah, just I got I got to put more money towards games for sure. <laughs> yep. that I don't play. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned you do a lot of digital, so uh, that that yeah. makes complete sense. Um, we're big collector slash physical uh, owner, so we have a lot of stuff. But I I actually did an unboxing of of these guys, which are the uh, South Park fractured butthole um, awesome. pack that you can get. If you're a South Park fan, these are kind of worth it. I got these actually on clearance at Best Buy for eighteen dollars. Uh, they're pretty fun. I just have them just for a display thing. They're they're kind of cool for what they are. They're not anything that I recommend running out to the store and getting them now. But if you can get them on clearance for 18 bucks, I mean, that's cheaper than three pops by, you know, almost 12, 15 bucks. Um, I also picked up the uh, Stone Mason edition. So this thing is massive. Um, it's uh, fantastic. Ames did the unboxing. I simply took the game out of the top and put it in and have not opened the rest of it yet. But uh, I will probably put it on my shelf. And then not quite a collectible. But I also got the console, and uh, the problem with that is I already have two other PlayStation 4s in the house. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we go a little bit overboard, honestly. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of nuts. But I did pick up a couple other collectibles, and I'm not going to show because I'm going to be doing some unboxings on them that are pretty fun. I'll give you a heads up there to, uh, or a little clue in there to Ains' favorite franchise. So mm -hmm. Link will be making some... Uh, appearances on on the statue case over here I'll, sh I'll show those later and um, i did pick up some funny enough some old software some backwards compatibility software for the xbox i picked up conquer uh bad fur day which was i have yet to put it and funny enough i did not have my uh version of red dead redemption anymore i don't know if i gave it to a friend or something so i picked that up and it's not really collectible but i had to get it because i want to see it in uh, 4k rounds. with con with conquer um you meant live and reloaded right Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, live and reloaded. Yeah, that for days, the 64 one. Yeah. So uh, really want to play it. I just, uh, God of War is going to take up all my time. I don't see any other game coming close in, in time anytime soon, and I'll probably be done with it, hopefully by next week. So Or by tomorrow if you keep up the pace you're on. I can't, I can't <laughs> do that. It, it, the game is massive, and I've actually gotten stuck on side quests recently to where I'm not even moving with the, the main narrative of the game. So uh, let's move over to our next one, which is the uh, Season Reflections. So Season Reflections, we usually talk about a game that is an older game, something not too new that was meant a lot to us, um, and we kind of reflect on it. So actually, Dan, why don't you start us out today? I know you got a couple you wanted to share with us. Yeah, man. I, you know, when I saw the list, I kind of was like, okay, you know, we can kind of keep on that vein. So I've got KOTOR 1 and 2. So these games... When they came out, I was never a really big role-playing guy. Um, I had played, I think, Final Fantasy, and you know, here and there. Um, but when this came out, it was so different. I mean, plus I'm a huge Star Wars nut, so that was kind of you know, and and going to look back into like the old universe, you know, that was, you know, with. Uh, how it kind of all started, you know, or, or, you know, at least back, you know, in that, uh, extended universe was really cool. 
I never played a game like it, uh, especially the first one. The second one was all right. It was, you know, not as good as the first, in my opinion, but it was still, you know, enjoyable. You know, I mean, and then, you know, there's the twists at the very end. I'm, you know, it's just there, there was so much to it. And when I, when I first played it, I was like, you know, this sucks. I, I wanted to smash people with lightsabers, but that's not really what it is. And for God, probably four hours into the game, I sat there and button mashed the whole time. And when you realize after a while, that really does absolutely nothing. <laughs> it's all time based, you know. It's all it's that it's that almost, you know, it's that real time. But it, it's a weird kind of system. But it, they used it the same one in Dragon Age, uh, the original Dragon Age, yeah. uh, which I loved. Good game. Uh, yeah, love that game. You know, and I've been kind of following Bioware ever since, and I, I think that's kind of where my love for Mass Effect came. You know, I've played every single one of them that have come out for the Xbox, the uh, Dragon Age, uh, Dragon Age Two, which was an abomination, and <laughs> Dragon Age Inquisition. I really enjoyed too. Uh, all the Mass Effects, you know, and I haven't played Jade Empire. I didn't realize that was a Bioware game. That's oh yeah, a, and, yeah. And, if, and if you like Kotor and stuff, you'll like it. Right. So I want to go back, and that's supposed to be backwards compatible, right? It so, is. So, yeah, that's 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 happening next. <laughs> so, but yeah, this th- those two games they really were very big surprises to me, you know, based on what they actually were and yeah, what I was expecting. So, it's funny you you know you just highlighted the point we were making is that a game with a good story will survive the test of time for a gamer right you'll think Absolutely. about that frequently and kotor has a fantastic story um mm-hmm. that you play through all the way up through the end uh great uh villain and ending and twist like you said and uh yeah amazing game yep um i will uh step up next here and like we said we're doing a little xbox backwards compatibility uh vein here for our season reflection so mine is the elder scrolls 3 morrowind and uh like i said this is the only way you can play it on console so i went back i actually sold my copy years ago so i went back when i heard this rumor before the official announcement i went and picked up a game of the year copy nice and complete got the disc it has the map uh basically everything in it and um Sure enough, these have like doubled in price since uh, the backwards compatibility, you know, went live. But a great game. I put it in. I installed it. It um, it is very very sharp compared to what I remembered. It's a really a nice enhancement on it, and it feels really really smooth. If you are a big Skyrim or even Oblivion fan, um, just be aware if you haven't gone back to the older Elder Scrolls games, they are much kind of. Uh, much less hand-holding occurs. They are very much like they throw you into this massive, massive world and you just figure it out, um, which is how games used to be. (laughs) Um, So if you're expecting Skyrim, please don't go back and play it because it's not that. Um, But if you like those older RPGs, especially Western style, then uh, Morrowind's a good one to go back to for sure. And it's probably one of the best ways you can play it now. So uh, you can definitely pick up a copy of that and, and install it and have some fun. Or, um, you know, with all these backwards compatibility titles, you can actually buy them digitally, too. Uh, Microsoft opens it up on the store, and I believe maybe one of you guys can correct me. I want to say these are either 10 or $15 um, if you buy them digitally right now. Yeah, I think they're always right. 10 bucks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, check it out. Um, great game. Um, again, it's time. I, this is a massive game. I think I had over you know, 70, 80, 90 hours into it when I was younger. I don't know if I'll do that again. I probably won't, but it's at least fun to go back to. Yep. Okay, my game is uh, Panzer Dragoon Orta. So this is um, was a Xbox-only game back in the day. It came out in 2002. Um, if you were a Sega Saturn fan or owned one back in the day, you probably have heard of Panzer Dragoon Saga or Saga, however you want to say it. And uh, this was a pretty big game back in 98 when the Saturn was around. I loved it. I had a friend that had the the now hard to find special edition that um, I've actually been hunting for, but I just can't throw down two, three hundred dollars mm-hmm. for it. It just makes zero mm-hmm. sense to do. Uh, maybe I can find it somewhere or someone that wants to sell it for a reasonable cost. But uh, Orta was the follow up. Um, I think it's still playable today because it's a rail shooter. The graphics are a little tough to kind of get over um, if you uh, are really into graphics, but there's really cool cinematics in it. 
It plays really, really well. Um, I did check it out um, not too long ago on the original Xbox. I have not tried it out on the uh, backwards compatibility yet, but it's my plan to kind of do so sometime this week and if I can once again break away from God of War. But uh, yeah, I definitely recommend checking it out. If you can play Saga, um, I recommend it, but that one might be just, just too old to play. But yeah, rail shooters, I don't know of any rail shooters that are around anymore. Um, I know that they did try to make a uh, dragon rail shooter game that was in the spirit of Panzer Dragoon recently. I actually forgot the name of that game. Yeah, it's escaping me too. It was uh, mm-hmm. on Xbox One back in 2015. Yeah. Um, I can't remember. I think it even had some of the original team. But uh, that's the closest that we've come to to rail shooters um, and the way they used to be made back in the early 2000s. So really cool game. Check it out if you haven't done so already. Cool. Um, all right, guys. So let's go ahead and close it out. That's that's it for one of our uh, uh, longer bit casts. I did want to talk about a few things that we have on our YouTube channel right now. So we have a few unboxings. Uh, more to come actually before the end of the week and hopefully if not early next week. Um, and then the other thing that we're going to be uh, continuing is our s- season gaming conversations, which Dan will hopefully come back if he didn't you know, wonder why he spent time with us today. <laughs> and uh, we'll be uh, talking about solely God of War. Now that's uh, very straightforward, very easy. It's quick 30 minutes. We are going to have some spoilers in it and we will give you guys a heads up when the spoilers are coming. But it will simply uh, be sharing kind of like our first impressions of the game, what we think about it, what we don't. 30 minutes, cut, start to finish. There won't be any extra or less on it. So um, other than that, I'll have my uh, review of South Park Fractured But Hole Out by next Friday. Uh, Ames, you have a couple of videos and uh, anything else you want to talk about yet, or are we going to save that for another time? Um, no, just the videos you mentioned. I do, uh, I'm wrapping up work on the next um, examining the classics. So I did Last of Us uh, several months ago, where I really go into a deep dive on the Last of Us story and development and, um, you know, why the game is so appreciated or loved. Um, I am wrapping up my article now on the second title, which is Bioshock, which we talked a lot about uh, this episode. So going into, you know, uh, everything about Bioshock and and why it's love. So um, we're also talking about possibly doing a a video or audio form of those articles as well. So more to come on that front. Cool. And Dan, we did want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, Hopefully we'll have you back a number of times. If you guys have not checked out Digital Hoarders before, take a look at them. Dan, you want to tell us a little bit about what y'all do over there? Well, I am just joining uh, for the first time on Wednesday. They asked me uh, a few days ago if I'd be a permanent uh, member. I was on their show um, uh, last week, last Wednesday. Um, just a special guest, I guess. Um, I had never done a podcast, so it was kind <laughs> of <laughs> it was kind of like you know baptism by fire. It was it was it went really well though, and I really enjoyed it. And they asked me to come on permanently, so starting I think Wednesday, I will be on there with uh, uh, Doc and Brandon and Alden. Uh, you can find them at Digital Hoarders. I think one of the <laughs> wish my phone wasn't dead because I think <laughs> the uh, uh, the ease is a three, but um. Uh, it's it's been really fun. What they do basically, and I think we're all the same here. Basically, we've got so many backlog games, you know, and we just keep buying them and buying them, and buying them, you know, whether it's digitally, which is what we do, but or you know, physical copies, you know, and it just doesn't stop. And uh, I know I'm the same way. I got 500 games sitting on my Xbox right now, <laughs> installed, and I've played, you know, 50 of them, maybe maybe 100. I don't know. It, it, Maybe I've tried them out. It, it's just, but you keep going. Like you said, you see sales and stuff like that. And I just, I have no control, which is why I have no collectibles. <laughs> because I'd be in the same boat as you guys. But it's a really fun podcast. Um, and, you know, come and watch it. It's, it's, it's a good time. You know, we have cool. a really good time in chat too. So it's, it's pretty fun. So are you guys mainly on uh, just YouTube or you? Yeah, uh, they, they, they broadcast yeah. it, I think, on YouTube uh, only. But I think Doc uh doc cupcake i don't want to say 84 he's uh he's got a mixer channel that he's been kind of co-streaming it with so at the same time so you can kind of watch it on both um i can always hit you guys up with that information and uh great. and let you know um but it, it, it's pretty fun it's just a bunch of guys that you know and they're all friends and just for them to give me the opportunity to come on um and be a guest host i was super excited and now be a permanent uh part of it is really great and also thanks to you guys for having me on it's been 
super fun and hilarious at times. <laughs> so it's, 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 this is really, like I told you guys, it's super addicting and it's really fun though. You know, and you get to talk to cool people. So I'm very grateful to you guys and to them for giving me the opportunity. Absolutely. Great. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. If you are following us from an audio perspective only, you're probably listening to our podcast, which we have on pretty much every podcast form you can think of. We're on iTunes. We're on Google Play Music now. So if you are an Android user, you can find us on there. We're on SoundCloud and other RSS feed type podcasts that you may uh, listen to. You can also find us on uh, YouTube at Season Gaming. And then as far as Twitter goes, you can find both Ains and I. Ains is at Porsche Power, and I am at Treb underscore SG. So thanks again for listening, folks. Have a good one.